So I'm Hugh Rosen, and uh, I see some familiar faces smiling at me. Hi, Jim. Um, and what I'd like to talk about is intelligent intervention, uh, how we discovered a new treatment for multiple sclerosis and inflammatory bowel disease at Scripps. And what I want to do is to give just a snapshot of translation as it happened at Scripps Research over a period of, for me, approximately 16 years, and highlight what has been special about Scripps research and what has and how we have benefited from the uh, colleagues and infrastructure that has stemmed from uh, the, both the scientific impact and the vision that Pete has brought to our institution. The notion of intelligent intervention comes from a 1974 essay by the late Lewis Thomas, which he published in the New England Journal of Medicine. And I read it as a young uh, medical student. The mechanisms of disease are quite open to intelligent intervention and reversal whenever we learn more about how they operate. And that set me off on a track of discovery in biomedical research that has uh, lasted well over 35 years. One of the things that I've learned is that creativity in translation and drug discovery requires some random collisions of fine minds. And that creativity doesn't really scale. The execution piece of discovery and development does. And so one needs to understand both the elements of creativity as well as the transition to execution. So my lab has used the power of chemistry and genetics to establish causal relationships between protein expression, signaling, and function in both normal functioning of the body physiology as well as in pathology. In 2002, we published a paper that showed that a receptor for a signaling lipid sphingosine 1-phosphate was involved in the regulation of lymphocyte trafficking. We hypothesize that given the wiring of the system and where those control nodes were for intervention, that defining an allosteric binding pocket within the receptor that would then trigger the receptor in biased but defined ways would have a translation into an acceptable immunomodulation as well as advantages in the clinical pharmacology that would be required to have safety and efficacy long term in man. So why Scripps? because we have colleagues, collaborations, multidisciplinary excellence, and infrastructure. So we made this hypothesis in the early 2000s. In 2005, the uh, NIH uh, screening center was funded at Scripps. We initiated the ultra-high throughput screen using technologies that in fact had been uh, developed by Pete and his colleagues. Um, from those products, we initiated chemistry. En passant, we made some significant scientific contributions. We discovered, for instance, that these receptors were not only immunomodulatory, but that they were able to suppress the cytokine storm that was associated, for instance, with the 2009 H1N1 influenza pandemic and shed some light into the relationship between the immune response and infectious disease symptomatology. We solved the crystal structure of the receptor with Ray Stevens and colleagues at uh, Receptos, but that again was a Scripps collaboration that then moved way beyond the walls of the institution and then ultimately achieving human safety and efficacy in both multiple sclerosis and ulcerative colitis. So when I talk about a collision of orbitals, none of this would have been possible um, without my colleague uh, Ed Roberts, who is one of the most intuitive medicinal chemists uh, that I've ever had the joy of uh, of, of interacting with it. And the discovery of ozanamod was a clear reflection 
of his unique insights in medicinal chemistry. And whereas I was able to provide some of the conceptual framework, it was Ed's gift that allowed us together to catalyze uh, an output. And what we developed was what we call RAMP. It's a rational multi-parameter optimization. It's a strategy where we focus on not one particular property of a molecule, but in fact, we focus on what we feel is the therapeutic gestalt of the molecule and align these variety of features in a very rapid way to be able to thread the needle to achieve the optimal properties for biological efficacy, not only in vitro, not only in pharmacological models in animal systems, but in a way that translates to optimal properties in clinical pharmacology and engaging the target in man in the appropriate way to thread that needle. And the outputs of this work at Scripps have been three compounds uh, right now that are either in man or on the cusp of man. Uh, one, of course, is Ozanamod, which I'll talk about, which will have its new drug application and European marketing authorization filed uh, in March of this year. Um, we also have two compounds that we uh, spun out into a startup called uh, Blackthorn Therapeutics, uh, one of which has uh, successfully completed phase, completed phase one multiple dosing and is now in phase two, and one that is on the cusp of going into uh, phase one dosing in man for uh, the treatment of autism. So what is Ozanamod? It's a selective well-tolerated oral treatment for serious autoimmune diseases that was invented and first synthesized at Scripps. It's an effective single daily dose treatment for rapid remitting multiple sclerosis with now a four-year tolerability that appears to be comparable to placebo. The first description of this mechanism, agonism of the sphingosine 1-phosphate type 1 receptor was described in my lab in 2002. It is the first new chemical entity that began life as a hit from the NIH library and from the NIH screening center uh, that was established at Scripps at both La Jolla and the Florida sites. It's a disease modifying treatment because it allows multi-step interdiction of the disease process. So it not only inhibits acute attacks in relapsing, remitting multiple sclerosis, but it prevents long-term tissue damage. We see this by magnetic resonance imaging, and we see this by the retention of brain volume and cortical size over many years after initiation of treatment. That correlates with the inhibition of the progression of disability. So it truly is a benefit uh, to patients. Just a snapshot, the compound was first synthesized at Scripps in 2008 and the provisional filing was in May of 2008. Of course, Lehman Brothers then collapsed and we formed uh, a startup called Receptos in uh, May 2009. The interim CEO was Bill Rastetter. The definitive CEO was uh, then Fahim Hasnain. It went through a rapid development process uh, in MAN, an IPO in 2013 until Receptos was acquired uh, by uh, Celgene in uh, 2015, who then assumed the development. So when will patients benefit routinely from these data? We know that there has been published data on multiple sclerosis and also on ulcerative colitis, a New England Journal paper from colleagues at UCSD, showing efficacy under both of those circumstances. The new drug application will be filed in March of 2019 for multiple sclerosis. We expect the ulcerative colitis phase three to be complete in the middle of 2020 and the new drug application to be filed for those indications. That's then 
will drive benefit to patients and we hope benefit to the institution as well. Let me end by thanking my collaborators at Scripps and at Receptos, without which we couldn't have achieved this full translation. Uh, and to Pete for the chance to mention this to you. Thank you. <laughs>